the pain like I'm Nagato. Got no father like I'm Naruto. Keep the blade on me, Ichigo. Who really wanna go toe for toe? DTR from Tokyo. Diamonds whipping up on the stove. Lucky man like a four leaf glow. Diamonds wanna go. Hello guys, my name is Nagato. Hope you guys are doing great today. Uh, but for this tutorial, I'm basically going to be showing you guys on how to install Dataless X64. If most people don't know what that is, it's basically a Nintendo 64 emulator for originally for your PlayStation Portable that was on custom firmware. But due to the fact that we can now install uh, Adrenaline, which is basically a PlayStation Portable uh, tie-in emulator that is for your PlayStation TV and Vita, now we could run PSP games or PSP games and also PSP homebrew using that method. So it's like an emulator within the emulator essentially. Um, like I like to state in all my videos, um, the prerequisites and some side notes, uh, you would need either a PlayStation Vita that's between firmware 3.60 to 3.68 as of right now. I know that uh, the official flow is going to be releasing another uh, exploit for 3.69 and 3.70 firmware. Uh, this method does also work with PlayStation TV. If I go hover over to my desktop real quick, I'm going to show you what required file files we need. So we need the latest version of Adrenaline VBK and every file that I am listing right now, guys, um, will be in the link below. So you need Adrenaline. You basically need uh, this file. This is optional, but I know that sometimes Adrenaline has an issue when reinstalling a new version. So this is basically the uh, firmware update that you need or the custom firmware update it's called 6.61 PB. I'll have a link in the description below for that one too. Any Nintendo 64 game, in this case I'm just going to choose one of my favorite N64 games and probably one of the most popular ones, which is Super Mario. And also you need a Dataless X64, the 1.1.7 zip, since this is the newest updated version of it. With that being said, I'm going to go back to my PC real quick and then talk about or showcase some of the new changes. So there's a new UI, there's some new images, uh, better ROM list, as you can read here, new eBoot logo and pick one. And this is basically, you can also run this on your PlayStation Portable if it has custom firmware. But with that being said, we're just going to do the Vita one. So first things first, I'm going to go switch over to my Vita and I'm going to talk more on how to install okay so as you guys see my Vita right here what you need to do now is go ahead and boot up Vita shell if you don't have Vita shell installed I'll have a tutorial and also a guide on how to install that basically in the description as well but once you have a Vita shell already previously installed what you want to do is go ahead and hit start and now either whether you want to FTP your files over or USB, in this case for this tutorial, I'm going to be just using the FTP method. So you will hit start, scroll down using the up and down directional pad button, and now eating, either hitting left or right to basically select which one you want to do. So if USB, select that one, FTP, just select that one. In this case, once you do that, hit circle, and then now you want to hit select. Make sure your uh, Wi-Fi, of course, is running on your PlayStation Vita. But now your FTP server should be running. And now what you want to do is also go back to your PlayStation, or excuse me, your PC now, and then type in your IP and port with any, with any um, FTP client. In this case, I'm using FileZilla, and that's what I'm going to be uh, recommending people to use. You can use any uh, FTP client, it really doesn't matter, but I'll just show you here. So just copy your IP, yours is different from mine, so go ahead and type your IP here, type in your port. And then go ahead and hit quick connect and then now your Vita you should see all your directories once it pops up it may take a little second but now what you want to do is go ahead and take your very first file of adrenaline and go ahead and put it in UX0 and then now what you want to do is copy over the 661.pb file and also just put that in UX0 just in case if um, adrenaline doesn't install correctly the very first time since it'll just save you know an extra step from going back on the PC as that is doing its transfer thing you could minimize that now and you'll also need excuse me WinRAR I'll just slide this down you also need a WinRAR basically to unzip this file so you could just uh, extract that to here and then you should get this folder with all the um, 
dataless x64 thing so this is what we're going to basically do is run the adrenaline app first and then basically we're going to put this folder and our games into it so we can actually do that now so right now you see our dataless folder what you want to go to is go ahead and click here go into our roms section and then whatever games or n64 games you could go ahead and dump it in that folder so we could save some time so once you basically finish that part right here what you want to do now is go ahead hold on let me make it bigger you could go ahead and extract Daedalus x64 back onto your PC and now what we're gonna do once we have all those steps done I think let's check FileZilla if you're doing the USB method it's probably way faster uh, you should get a notification that um, stated that adrenaline and also this file this the PBB file or a PBP file yeah excuse me has transferred over successfully now from there we're gonna go back to our Vita so let me switch back you could close out your FTB server if you're following along and now what you want to do now from here is go straight to your uh, go to adrenaline install it like any normal VPK and then once the, the uh, VBK has initially installed, what we're going to do is just go ahead and boot the app once it pops up right back into live area. So it may take a little second. Okay, it's done. Now what you want to do is go back to your live air area, whether you're using a PS TV or PS Vita. Go ahead and just click onto the app. You should see the little adrenaline logo. And now I should ask you to basically install the 6.61 firmware. If it doesn't uh, give you some error like this, cannot find it, which it always does for me for some reason. It's fine. That's why we copied over the 6.61.pb file. What you want to do is hold the PlayStation button. Go ahead and hit select and exit out PSP MU application. And now what you want to do is go ahead into Vita Shell. And once you have a Vita show basically pop back open, go ahead and hit, go where on uh, York zero, press triangle and copy the 661.pb file. And we're gonna go scroll up all the way to app. And then within app, we're gonna find the uh, content ID, which is PSP MU CFW. That's basically uh, adrenaline. And now we're just going to copy and paste that 6.61 PB file since it couldn't find it. What it's supposed to normally do in that situation is to download it from whatever server the flow has. But in this case, it didn't do that, which is okay. Now what you want to do is go ahead and run adrenaline again. And now it should install basically adrenaline and do its thing. So as you see now, once I click X to install, it's going to create all the directories and basically create, you know, all the loads for the file. So this process could work. And then once it creates all the directories, it's going to extract the firmware. And now, as you see, a bunch of line of code on my screen, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video right here. And then once that process is done, I'll meet y'all guys back here. So. Okay guys, so it's basically finished. As you see here, you get the little disclaimer that states the firmware has been installed successfully. Press X to boot for the PSP X and B, which I'm gonna do now. So if you have a PS3 controller on your PS TV, just hit X. If you're on your Vita, just hit X like normal. And now what it should it do is basically boot up into the PlayStation Portable X and B and you should see hear that lovely sound. Go ahead and hit English or whatever language you are, or you know, what you speak you could just go ahead and pass all through this stuff and now you should basically see um well you should have seen the games but now you should basically see your playstation portable uh emulator running from via adrenaline but now what we're going to do is go ahead and hold the playstation button hit settings and go straight back out and now what you want to do is Go back into Vita Show, and now this is where all the magic is going to happen to install our Nintendo 64 games. Um, in this case, go ahead and hit start. If you're going to do the USB method, it should be you know toggled to that way. But just go ahead and make sure by hitting start, scrolling down, and look at the select button option. Toggle either left or right if you want to do USB or FTP. In this case, I'm doing FTP. So now what you want to do, once you figure out which one you want to do, uh, hit select. And then broadcast your IP. 
and your FTP server. Now what you want to do is go ahead back onto your PC. And once you're back on your PC, you want to go ahead and boot up into FileZilla. Go ahead and type your IP and port. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead and quick connect again. And then from here, what you want to do is go into UX0. Scroll all the way down where you see PSP Emu. And now, usually where a regular PlayStation Portable games go are in ISO. But what we're going to be focusing on now is going into PSP, into game. And this is where uh, the Daedalus uh, X64 folder is going to go. The one where we just put our um, Super Mario game in. So what you want to do now is go ahead and just copy it over. I'll make it big screen. It may take a little while for it to do since it has to queue all the files, as you see here. Or it may not actually take too long uh, but with that being said I'll go ahead and pause the video right here and then right now I'll go straight into back once it's done all right guys so my uh, files all transferred over from the uh, data list x64 uh, folder and if you're doing this by USB it's probably faster but once you see all your contents in your folder is done now what you want to do is go ahead and go back into o or and excuse me not OBS but to your PlayStation Vita. You could exit out the FTP server, and now what you want to do is just go ahead and uh, Vita shell. Just verify the files are in here. That's what I always like to try to do when I do stuff like this. Go into PSP, go into game, data list, and now you should see your game that is dumped via here. Now you could go ahead and back out of Vita shell. And now what you want to do is go ahead and run adrenaline. And now once you want adrenaline, uh, it should not ask you to, you know, reinstall the firmware. It's supposed to be a one-time thing. And now you probably hear the PlayStation Portable, um, you know, intro boot. And now where you want to go to is memory stick. And now you should see Dataless X64. Go ahead and run it. I'm probably going to uh, mute the volume for the Mario 64 game because I do not want to get copyright. But um, right here, I'll show you how to basically look through. So you should see your game right here. Go ahead and press X to load and then start emulation. Now, what I want to say, the audio in certain uh, parts of games is, you know, not the best. Same thing with the frame rate. So this uh, process is not true Nintendo 64 emulation. But um. As you see here, you see me running N64, uh, you know, or excuse me, <laughs> the Super Mario 64 on my Vita, and you can tell I'm running it in real time. With that being said, my name is Nagato, and thank you all guys for watching. I really do appreciate y'all, and I'll see you next time in my next video. Peace.